course it's uh waking up in the early morning <laughs> and um yeah it's that's fatherhood and nah, i'm very proud of him and proud, i'm very happy that, of course, uh, of course. Uh, ba- baby phil's been born so <laughs> how's carrie she's good uh she's uh in the process she's uh, I feel bad because in terms of, yeah, she, it wasn't quite the summer she was hoping for, like a lot of people, but she's preparing now to start college in September, uh, in September, no, wait, August, sorry, start college in August. Is Carrie over here in Manila? Yeah, yeah, she's here in Manila. Oh, so she's staying with you now, right? Yeah, yeah, she's with me, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen her in a long, long time, man. Uh, <laughs> I think the last time I saw her, it was... Wow, that was like four years ago. I was at oh, wow. guys in some funk. Yeah, yeah. She's wow. she's nine. She's turning nineteen this year. So, all right. So we're live on Facebook, and after this, I'll I'll post on YouTube because a lot of the media guys will be watching. Yep. All right. Cool, uh, good evening. Welcome to Phil Oil Flying V presents Usapang Football. We have a very special guest tonight, and um, yeah. I'm quite proud to say that I've worked with this gentleman for quite some time and he was my former Gatorade brand ambassador and I well I still call him that and I think he's one of he's just one heck of a special footballer and you know I I don't have too many national jerseys but I have number seven I got number seven in my closet and I'm very proud to own that because this dude our guest gave it to me and you know it, it means I don't even have Phil's number <laughs> I'm a fan of his brother too, but I have number seven. It's number seven. <laughs> played with a lot of passion, played with a lot of heart, played with a lot of fire. And our guest, as you all know, is none other than James Young Usman. Good evening, James. <laughs> evening, Rick. Thank you so much, man. It's good to see you again and uh, really happy to see you. Uh, well, just to clarify, this music is your music that I can hear? Oh, is it on? Yeah, I can hear it. Like, is it, right. It's uh, figgy now. It's I, I put it off already. It? Oh it's, wait, it might be my music. I can hear music. music. <laughs> oh, my Spotify is off. Wait, let me check. I'm, I'm like wondering because I'm like, oh wait, yeah, it's playing. Yeah, I've just paused it because I was a okay. bit confused. I was like, wow, oh, Rick's music's exactly like mine, and his playlist is in the same order as mine. I'm like, wow, we have the same taste of music. And I was like, wow, it's a good beat to warm up to. Well, as <laughs> I know, just oh, back, back in the day when in those bus you could, rides you in could, the locker room. You, you couldn't hear it. You couldn't hear the music. No, no, I couldn't. But before you came ah, in, I was just playing me, some yeah. music for the people lis- listening. Ah, okay. It was just me. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no no worries. That's right. But before, okay, we, yeah. before mm-hmm. we get started, uh, James, we have a couple of media people yep. uh, who've attended. We've got Edwin. I think Edwin is from Iloilo. He's a uh, he newspaper <laughs> there. Kevin uh, works for a website here in Manila. Hi, Kevin. As I understand, a lot of our other friends here in Manila, the media, I think, Sadelf will be watching. So Hi, Sadelf. <laughs> so we got a lot of other guys watching this. And some awesome. of our former teammates. We're waiting for them to log right. on. Uh, cool. Hi, guys. <laughs> Georgie Ronda is watching. Ah. Hi, Roy Laurel is watching. <laughs> oh, Roy, my boy. My boy. <laughs> I meant, I meant to meet up with him maybe sometime in the future to hang out and see how uh, he is. <laughs> Angel Grado says, hello, James. Uh, I, nice to see you. I, He's watching, James. Uh, Angel, my friend, how are you? <laughs> uh, Ma- coach Maor Rosen, former Kaya uh, coach, hi, is coach. Wat- watching. Hi, he coach. says, James, you're a great footballer with a high level of tactical understanding of the game. Thanks, coach. It really means a lot. It's really great. Yeah, Thank you so great. much. A former Miralco teammate, Alex Elnar, is also watching. Ah, uh, Alex, how are you? How are you, man? <laughs> and watching from Germany is a former teammate of yours during the 2010 Suzuki Cup, although he was on the bench. Mark Drinketh, you remember Mark? Ah, Mark, of course, of course. I was watching uh, the video when we after the miracle in Hanoi and in the change room. It's good to see him. Like, it's good, right? It's, uh, that it's was great a memories. Bad video, huh? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> It captured the madness right there. Anyways, to get on with our discussion, um, we're going to be talking about the 2010 Suzuki Cup, as you all yep. know, for those watching. It is the 10th anniversary, although that's a couple of months away in December. But given the state of this pandemic, we don't know. Might as well celebrate it now while we have these guys here with us. 
Exactly. Um, and then after exactly. that, we'll be asking mm -hmm. James about a couple of things like his stint in the Miracle Row Sparks. And of course, that game changing Clear Dream match. That was just such an awesome, awesome mm -hmm. event. And I was just very happy to be a part yeah. of that. First and foremost, James, what has been keeping you busy during this pandemic? Well, um, no, um, at the start, it was uh, we were in the middle of the season. We just had AFC, and uh, we we beat, uh, we won at, uh, here in Manila, and we're top of the group. So uh, emotions were high, and uh, then this pandemic hit. And I think originally we thought it wouldn't be too long, so it was just keeping fit at the start, maintaining fitness. And then it got it went on longer than we thought. So I've kind of uh, brought the training levels down. I work out roughly uh, four to five times a week. And yeah, at first it was doing paintings, doing learning new skills on YouTube. Hey, wow. Yeah, um, but music's been a big help, <laughs> like um, cook uh, with the emotions of it all. It's uh, no, I just wish everyone's okay. And yeah, hopefully this, uh, hopefully we progress and things slowly go back to a new normal. But yeah, just uh, keeping used to my routine. And then obviously, I think of anything, just already making plans for uh, 2021 and uh, with what we can do when hopefully there's a vaccine available. So. James, I'm curious. I've always known that you and Phil were big music fans, but what's yeah. top five on your playlist right now? What's the top five? You know, I'll check for you now, Rick. Uh, <laughs> it's quite like weird, weird, weird. You know I'm into my movies, so I always get the movie yeah. soundtracks as well on mine. Definitely. Uh, I'll go to the top. Wait, the recent ones I've downloaded was uh, I had Alive by Empire of the Sun. Mm -hmm. uh, which one was there? Uh, M83. Uh, uh, Coldplay, Life in Technicolor. Um, I had a bit of, uh, what's you call it? You know, uh, after the Joker movie, I had Gary Glitter, Rock and Roll Part 2. Right. And then, and then Post Malone, Circles. And um, Sunflower. So. That's an interesting playlist, James. But before yeah, we hear random. more from you, Alex Elnar says, it is nice to see both Sir Rick and Cap Captain James, Joseph Young Asman. <laughs> Cheers, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, uh, Alex. I miss you, man. Roel Hanair is watching, doing, James. Doing good, Alex. Hanair. Roel Hanair is watching. So. Ah. Hi, Hanair. <laughs> Hi, Hanair. How are you, buddy? <laughs> um, Hope you're good, man. James, Forgive me for this. It's, this must be the first, you know, whenever I see you, there's Phil. You know, it's just always a junior. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's a package character. deal. <laughs> it's yeah. like a package deal, yeah. <laughs> um, this is the first time I know that Phil's not within the zip code of you. And he's no. across the ocean. Yeah. So what's yeah. it like now being your, being by yourself with your sister and being far away from Phil? How often do you talk? Um, no, we talk literally mostly every day, really. Um, this is a great thing with technology like we are now. We get to communicate and instantly update with each uh, instantly update with uh, each other's uh, lives. Uh, with Kara, with my sister, it's yeah, she's uh, trying to keep her busy as well. She'll start college in in August, so we're excited for her. I'm very really proud of her that she graduated. Nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, and obviously my brother uh, has had his baby boy with his wife Mags, and so we get to see get to see little baby Phil on um, on video chat and he's, he's really adorable and yeah it's uh, it's uh, obviously no one was prepared for this situation but I think if you with anything you always look at the positives and the positive things are you get to with, spend spend time at home with your family your loved ones and faithful to technology you get to share uh, communicate instantly with each other well that's always good to know Obviously, this year is the 10th anniversary of the 2010 Suzuki Cup. Yeah. Um, when you look back at it, how do you feel about that incredible historic tournament that just turned everyone's fortunes around? The um, national team, Philippine football, yourselves, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, as you said, Rick, it's the 10th year and it's, I think that's always with uh, everyone involved in Philippine football, that's the one that sticks out the most, being honest, in everyone's, in everyone's uh, minds and hearts. Uh, I actually, the other day, was going through all the video clips on YouTube of all the games that build up towards, that, uh, towards uh, our time in Vietnam, even the qualifiers, because we were having a discussion with all the other players, with Anton, with all, 
uh, Rob, Chris, Ali, uh, Ray, and Phil, uh, with at Neil and uh, even Simon Greatwich, we were having a catch up and we spoke about a lot of what ifs. And watching it again, like I did realize how close it was our last game against um, it was against uh, Cambodia. How they ne- they nearly nicked a win against us, and there's a lot of what ifs. And I was like, if we maybe had, uh, things gone differently, we might have not ended up in Vietnam. It could have been a different route. It, it's always you think back and like you think, what if, what if? And now nah, it's, it's just it's it's for history made, and we're very um, very proud of it. And uh, it's uh, yeah, it's always a good story to go back towards. But reality is such a beautiful thing, isn't it, my friend? Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's a lot. Of, it's again, it, you look at it. I think what makes it so special as well is you, you, you look back, and I was actually like thinking we could get together and make a video of the whole experience, the whole journey from the qualifiers, from when Simon McMinimi came in, and yeah. like the whole coming together of it all, and like uh, how like uh, the drama of it all, because. I think it's we we hear all this stuff and we uh, we go over it, but I think it it's like if you go, we need to go over it in detail because it's it's so uh, it's so interesting and so uh, so detailed and yeah, it's a real good uh, good thing to relive. You know, I probably have around five hundred to seven hundred photos and a lot of videos that a lot of you guys have not seen. Oh so, wow! I look forward Ali, to seeing them. Yeah, Ali was actually saying that you know. Um, there was the last dance of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Of course, there yeah, should be the first dance for the Philippine Ascals. You know, that's what he was Yeah, saying. that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, definitely it is a great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned the qualifiers. Uh, and to borrow Rob Gear's words last night or two nights ago, he said, we qualified by the skin of our teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, heading into Vietnam... When we got into Vietnam, what, I mean, what do you recall? What were, what were you thinking as you flew into Vietnam? Did you sense that there was going to be history in the making or were you just happy to be there? Um, no, if anything, that thing that was on my mind was we have a real good chance. Mm-hmm. I, I, I said this before to Ali Borromeo like, or, and, and Anton Del Rosario. Like, I remember when we first moved to, the Philipp- moved to Manila, me and my brother, we, we were just settling in and we were based in Mandaluyong and we regularly meet up with these boys in uh, How's That Sports Bar in mm-hmm. Makati to watch yeah. the football. And I remember Ali saying, wouldn't it be good? Like, just imagine how big it would be if we qualified at least for the semifinals of the, of the Suzuki Cup. It would it'd be huge for Philippine football. And when we were going to Vietnam, I always felt we, we, had, a sem- we, had, a, we had a good program with training, uh, regularly in I- ISM school here in Manila, and we had a real good team brought together. And like I mean, they had Ray Johnson come in, and I, it was like I think we were really building towards. Uh, we had something set up, a good army set up, and a good balance of all round like strengths uh, strengths of players that can contribute to to doing well. And I think it's just that was the for me that was the possibility that was going through my head when we were on our way to Vietnam. Right mm-hmm. when I. Before the last couple of weeks when I started reviewing the material, the games and all that, I was always of the mind that I thought that Chris Greatwich and um, Neil Lethbridge were the players of the tournament. But watching it now, mm. you had that crucial assist to Chris yeah. and two, two crucial assists to, to Chris, if I, if I may. Yeah, right? and I, I said that to Chris. I was like... Um, uh, was how did that come? From? Yeah, this the Singapore game, the first one. Yeah, um, mm. I always say the thing. I did say this in the group uh, when we were catching up. I wanted to, because, and I said this uh, when we were rewatching the highlights again. I was like, "What do you notice about Chris Greatwich that sticks?" Like as us players would know, because it was uncertainty if Chris was going to be, uh, be part, uh, be able to make it in time right. for to be to be in the the lineup uh, and be able to play in the game. To, James, James, you there? James, hold on a second, everyone. I think uh, some technical difficulties. James, you there? Can you hear me? I'm here. I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris came in like I think like just uh, 
just made it just in time and his jersey number and printing is different to all the other players because his jersey had to be made on the day uh, uh, literally in the country itself mm-hmm. and it was we were really thankful that he made it but uh yeah and when uh, i remember in that game uh, we were i said this the other day we were James, I think we we lost you again. Hold on, everyone. Just a little technical difficulty over here. But we want to thank you all for watching Usapang Football with James Ramosman and Rico Olivares. James, there you are. Yeah, Go. yeah, I can see you, sir. Yeah, and uh, I remember uh, when it came to the tour, one of the tactics was Simon Minimi would uh, put me to the left from the right, and we just change, mix things up a bit. And yeah. I remember picking up the ball in the first game against Singapore. And I'm not usually the best with my left foot, but I managed to get a, get a good ball in across the box, even though yeah, I heard uh, the Singapore defender uh, uh, was, was struggling with an injury. So a bit fortunate at that part. So, yeah, I'm always, for me, I'm always happy to contribute with an assist, actually, more than a goal. You know, um, Rob was telling me about those little details. And he mentioned that if Ian Arnett had not gotten that hat trick against uh, yeah. Timor Leste, we wouldn't have got qualified. And yeah, exactly. watching the games again, there was that against Singapore, it was like what, the 93rd minute? Mm. Probably yeah. like a minute left in the game? Yeah, it was near the end. Uh, near yes. the end. And, uh-huh. yeah, so, and we were quite tired as well. But I think, yeah, we just managed to keep going to the end. And we, I think we felt we were always in it with uh, just Singapore one goal up. And yeah. I think for us, it was just, we just wanted really to to get a bit more respect and just get a goal and show like we're not here just to make up the numbers and we're not here to, uh, we're no longer the whipping boys. And yeah, yeah. It's just, so that's why you can see how happy we were just getting an equalizer with our celebrations. You know, I think people have to give Simon McMenemy some credit here. Oh, definitely. But towards the end of that game, or some like something like in the seventieth minute, he pulls out Ian Araneta. Then I think he moves you up forward, and then yeah, he moved me to the left side. Oh, up striker. Yes, you're right there. That's, that's right. So top, yeah. then he inserts Joe Bell Bermejo at the mm. back. Yeah, Joe Bell, who got that crucial stop in the midfield because had Singapore gone on the attack, that goal wouldn't have happened. But Joe yeah. Bell got the crucial interception. He passed yeah. it to Phil, then Phil found you, and you found Chris. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That was tactical genius. <laughs> uh, no, so like, that's why I always said the special thing about that. Uh, one thing that it's not acknowledged enough about that uh, tournament was uh, how every like everyone, everyone on the bench, the whole squad, every single person, the staff contributed and really made a difference. And there's a lot of unsung heroes from that whole experience. I was surprised because uh, Simon mentioned in my interview the other day that uh, some people thought that he was a bit of a dictator. And I don't really recall that because I remember remember him regularly meeting with the coaches and asking for their input. Yeah. But I thought that he brought – what, what did, to you, what did Des Bullpen bring to the team? I thought he organized it, but I thought that Simon brought in a lot of defense for you guys. Oh, well, um, no, with Des um... – with Des, actually, I wasn't. I just moved. Actually, had just moved to Manila at the time when Des was appointed. Uh, I think it was just a bit unfortunate with the timing in terms of uh, the getting to know what had happened before. And uh, I think Des actually uh, wasn't aware of what I, uh, my commitment to the team was. Uh, like I, I'd just done a bit of work with uh, some modelling and. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was my way of income, uh, compa- and I took a break from football. And I think he wasn't aware that I actually was still playing and keeping fit in football. And he, he, we, uh, I think once he found out the truth, he apologised about the situation. And uh, But, yeah, it, it didn't quite – and then uh, I think that's when things didn't quite work out with uh, the terms of uh, preparations for uh, the national team. But then, yeah, it's, I think things changed and uh, – uh, then Simon McMinimi came in and uh, we were asked, me and my brother were asked, uh, we met with Dan Palami and uh, we were asked if we could, uh, we, we uh, found a way for us all to come back into the national team. You mentioned Dan Palami. How big was Dan's appointment as team manager for the Ascals? Oh, massive. It's massive. Uh, uh, 
Dan, uh, 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 done so much for Philippine football. And I always remember when he sat us down for when we had dinner to, and he discussed his plans and his goal for the national team. And it's yeah, and it was it was great. It's, you really felt it's um, he was open to ideas and he really wanted what was the best for Philippine football. And I say it's it's he's done so much for the uh, for Philippine football, and uh, we're all very thankful. And yeah, it's. Uh, it's uh, yeah, and I was watching the highlights back again, or get especially against Vietnam, uh, uh, the joy, the joy in his face when we scored, and I mean that's what it's all about, and it's uh, like that whole emotion. It's uh, yeah, uh, Dan deserves all the uh, all the thanks for everything for for, give, for giving the opportunity for us all to achieve what we've done. That's why it's called Dan the Man. You mentioned <laughs> Vietnam. Did were you aware the morning of the game that? Phil was not feeling well because he was roommates with Ian. And who are you staying? Were you yeah. with Chris? Were you with Chris? I, I was with. Who was I with? I think I was with Anton. I think yeah, we. Were, I was with Anton because back then it was um, you were signed with your positions, and me and Anton were playing on the right. Ian and Phil are strikers. Uh, so that's how it was assigned. Um, I'm actually. Where was I with? Uh, yeah, no, I was with Anton. And uh, I think so. <laughs> I have to clarify that one. Um, so uh, I, I was no. Um, I was actually. Uh, I remember going into breakfast, and I was wondering where my brother was because I usually I see him, and and I, I heard whispers that Phil's not feeling well, and obviously you feel a bit like, oh no, <laughs> like uh, our top, uh, like our one of our, uh, well, our, should I say, the key player for us with in terms of getting goals, and that's what we need. <laughs> Uh, to yeah. win football matches, it's it's always worrying when you hear that, uh -huh. and so yeah, that's how I found out. And then I I think after we finished dinner, I went to uh, Wally the physio to ask what's going on, and he informed me my brother yeah he's struggling with uh, uh after eating I think some chicken the night before, and even some other players were complaining that they what they didn't feel a hundred percent. Right. Okay, but in in fact, it wasn't only Phil. I mean, Chiefy was knocked out of that match against Singapore. Yeah, why Roel Henner came on board to start yeah. for against Vietnam. Yeah, okay. that was the defending champions right there. What were your what was being discussed inside the locker room against the defending champions? Well, um, no, I think after we uh, uh, after we drew with Singapore, what sticks out in my mind is the game after our game against Singapore was Vietnam versus Myanmar. Yeah, and I remember us having the seats right behind. The right midfielder, who was like the, you could say their Lionel Messi player, uh -huh. and every time that he got the ball, the crowd erupted, and uh -huh. it was literally like watching Lionel Messi play. And uh -huh. they, I think, they, the end score was seven-one. So obviously, we're like, oh, this this is the team we're playing next. They've just beaten uh, Myanmar, who we have a bit of a trouble, uh, tough time against already with Myanmar. We're playing Vietnam, who just battered them seven-one. So I think what's going for our mind is it's uh, it's going to be a challenge, and I think we have to really be like look at the safety part here and be, go towards a defensive route. And, and I remember like us having the team meeting in I think Simon McMinimi's room, uh, or he already laid out the the tactics plan. And I saw that I was playing on the left hand side, uh, left midfield to defend against their right winger, and I just see how much running I'd have to do where it was. It was a lot of running back and defending. And uh, Rob Gear said, oh, I feel sorry for you, Jimmy. <laughs> like, and it's, um, and I was like, wow, that's, I'm prepared to do that. I know that's my role. That's my responsibility today is to just think defensively. But the team did a good job because as much as they were teeing off on, on Neil, because I was like, what? 10, 15 feet away from Neil behind goal. And I was just watching him tee off on him. But Rob would get a key block. Ali would get a key block. And Neil would just parry every shot hit coming his way. Oh, yeah. That was incredible. And, um, you know, just mm. watching a stop wave after wave of attack. And, um, yeah, no, exactly. but, but the thing is, we, we nicked them. Uh, there was that goal by yeah. your pass to, to Chris that, 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 that score and uh, what yeah. were your thoughts at that moment there? That was an incredible pass, you know. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, no, it's just 
I remember just like, it, when it comes to those games, I think when we played like the likes of Singapore, Vietnam, and then in our last game we played Myanmar, these were they are strong teams. They're still strong teams, and but back then we were like still a team developing, and I think with us, especially when we were playing defensively, like it required a lot of uh, fitness levels, and uh, back then most some of us weren't playing in regular leagues, and. It was more of us playing regularly with the national team and doing uh, regular training sessions here in Manila and going on the odd training camp to Davao. And then even we went to Taiwan and it was very physically demanding, like uh, in terms of you know, we would have to just track back and it. It's just uh, when we get the ball, making it count, really. We have to read some comments here. Rally San Agustin says, Jimmy boy. Hi, Rally. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, man? <laughs> Coach Maor says once more, the victory in Hanoi was an epic win. It's <laughs> nice to remember the great historic times, but football continues, and the next challenge for, the, for Pinoy football should be 2030. Oh, cheers, Coach Maor. Uh, I really visit that. Another former teammate of yours in the Sparks, Anto Gonzalez. Coach Anto is watching. Anto! Right? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a lot of guys are going to be here. All right. Coach Anto is the fittest man I know. I like watching. I like watching his ins inspirational workouts on social media. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, at that point, you were up one nil. Did yeah. you feel that we had a chance that to to steal this game from the home team, the defending champions? Um, being honest, and that, when we went one nil up, I think it was just a. I was, I I didn't expect it. I think we were just holding out and trying to get the game as like trying to keep the game like close and hopefully yeah maybe nick in one off a set piece or anything because yeah well, as I said when we watched them beat uh, Myanmar seven one of course you know they have uh, they're very strong in attack and especially with the fans in Hanoi like just the you could feel the electricity the the, the the fans, like it's like, yeah, you got them on top of you as well. So, I mean, like when when we one nil up, it's always like now we just have hope in that it's we keep it together and yeah, and uh, just keep it close. Really, just just keep, uh, stop them from getting through. Phil obviously was not one hundred percent, but as Simon, Coach Simon said the other day, there was no way Phil was not going to play. He was going to suit up even oh, yeah. if, even if he was at ten percent of his capability. Yeah. And he scored on a 1v1. The, describe your feeling because at that exact moment that he scored, I think it was like, what, the 73rd minute or something like that? What yeah. are your thoughts then? Uh, I, me I remember us breaking up and because I was playing on the left-hand side, I remember, uh, yeah, Phil had the shot and it was like, you just hear the crowd go, ooh. And then Ian Araneta picked up the ball on the left-hand side of the goal and uh -huh. I came to support Ian. To, and I was like, Ian, give me the ball, give me the ball. And what my plan was originally was to get the ball, have a touch and try and whip it in <laughs> the top corner. I don't know if it would have worked out. But uh, but then I remember Ian playing it across the box. And I was like, oh. And then Chris Greywich had picked, uh, come onto the ball. And because Chris had scored, I thought, oh, Chris is going to have a shot here. And then like very sneakily and very cleverly, Chris had uh, like just side-footed it to Phil and thrown off the defenders. And then... Phil chopped the defenders and and then I was like it was all like kind of like a bit of like it went slow motion and it went really quick and mm -hmm. I remember just seeing the ball roll into the goal when Phil right. slid it in with his left foot and I remember it going in and at first a little bit of disbelief and and but then after that like it was just relief because I was like oh we're two goals up yeah we get to rest a bit more because we've just been running this whole game <laughs> so yeah so it was it was a relief because it just gives you that extra cushion like your two guys if they get one bag you're still in the lead so it just gave you that bit more like yes i can like not completely relax but it sort of just gives you that bit of cushion to uh to just instead of always yeah run because we ran so much that game cushion is right in fact a few a, a minute after that anton del rosario looks at ali borromeo and says is that score for real <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ali goes, yes, it is. <laughs> We're going to win this. We're going to win this. Yeah. So the belief yeah. <laughs> had gone up at that point. Yeah. Now, yeah. what do you recall from the bedlam inside 
the locker room because you went to Phil and Phil was vomiting his guts out in the toilet. Yeah. Um, well, it was like some players had stayed out, but me, I was like, I was, I was taking complete disbelief. But I was like, I was like, yeah, because as I said earlier, we ran so much, and it was you saw just like you were like I was craving like uh, some craving like energy drinks and just wanted to get like just recover and in a bit of shock really and I remember getting yeah. in and gra- uh, grabbing as whatever energy drink I could find in the locker room and then I see Phil like kneeling on the floor like you could see the door open in the yeah. toilet Phil yeah. kneeling down and Wally uh, co- uh, physio the physio Wally like co- uh, hold uh, seeing if he's okay and you just hear Phil vomiting yeah. and then, um, me I was just like sat down and I uh, just, I think what was great was, as I said, every player on the bench who would, uh, the, all the subs were so ecstatic and uh, just like so happy, and they got the, they got the ice bucket and threw it in the air and threw it on the floor, and they just did cleanse, but like rolled a slid on their chest on uh-huh. hard concrete uh, yeah. with ice on the floor, like, and that's how it, I think that was what made it so great. Like everyone was happy, but no one felt bad. Like mm-hmm. everyone was so happy, and no one felt oh, I didn't play. I, uh, I'm, I, I'm gonna sulk in the corner. Uh, but everyone was so happy with that moment, and in disbelief, but also yeah, with joy. Speaking of disbelief, after that draw against Singapore, Radi Abramovic was accused us of parking the bus. Oh, Renel, Roel and Eric's not there. He says hi. Um, uh, hi, Hannah. <laughs> they accused us of parking. Oh, was the it bus. him? I suppose. I thought it was the Vietnamese coach that accused us because I remember him not not happy and shaking his hands. Yeah, he he said the same thing. He said the same thing yeah. too. Now, oh, well. that's part of the, it's part of the game. <laughs> it's part of the game. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anything you could get a point off, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all about the results in those tournaments. <laughs> I want to ask you this because Rob doesn't remember this part. Do you rem- um, do you remember when we arrived at the hotel? The mm. Myanmar and Myanmar and Singapore players were there waiting for us in the lobby. Then they were applauding us. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. And I remember again in the elevator and some of the Singaporean players were like in there and they're like, wow, great job, guys. Like it was uh, like, it was really, yeah, it was like, we're still trying to, it was a really nice hotel as well. I remember the nice TV. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was like, yeah, it's still sit. I think at that time it was just still sinking in of what just ha- had happened. And yeah, it was like, I think, and then after that, it was like, okay, now we have, we, there's the possibility of qualifying for the semifinals. Right. When you play, you're one of those, I'm not saying that your other teammates don't play with a fire, but you, Jason De Jong, you play with this energy, this fire, this passion, and it shows in the way you play. As you said, when you saw the poster, I've got my game face on. Yeah. So, um, where does that come from? Because Phil is, I'm not saying Phil is not focused, Phil is not passionate or fiery, but you wear your heart on your sleeve, James. Yeah. Every oh, game, from the moment I saw you yep. play in the Philippines, you were a guy that who hated, if the guy, if your man got past you, you hated it, and you went after yeah. him. If you could yeah. tackle him, you're going to tackle him. If you missed a shot and goal, you'd beat yourself up for it. Where does that yeah. fire come from, James? Uh, well, no, it's, just I think from my uh, upbringing, like um, uh, I was always very, like growing up with my brother, I was always very competitive. And being honest, when I was super young, my brother was the, like he was more technically advanced than me when it came to football. And I think for me, I had to make up for that with uh, with my uh, hunger to win and everything. And, and growing up, I had idols such as like David Beckham, Roy Keane. And then later on, yeah, the likes of Stephen Gerrard. And I always felt like I wanted to, I felt that that really that was such a great thing to have, and I just I find it's uh, contagious those things where that determination and imagine you have a whole team like that, like it's very strong chance you're going to win if you have uh, lots of players with that attitude. So I just find it's uh, it's something that I learned when growing up really, and it's something I find these days you have to have in whatever you want to do. Right. You have the, you have to have that that passion and determination. Uh, to succeed in whatever you want to do and if not it's like yeah you can have all the talent in the world but if you don't have the attitude it's not going to work out so yeah and as well as becoming a coach lately 
I always find the, the most important thing for anyone is, is attitude and wanting to learn and wanting to, to achieve something. Right. I'm going to show you some pictures and I want you to talk about these pictures. Um, sure. Can you see it, James? Uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I've got this one. I uh, say so against Singapore when we're walking out, yeah. <laughs> what was the feeling like? That game, you know, um, uh, walking out. And the fans, actually the Vietnamese fans were cheering for us. Yeah. yeah they were. Um, I think at this time it was like, um, it was like, well, I've already, like, it's, to be honest, I was part of the, the first, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it, it was called the Suzuki Cup back then, but the, the ASEAN uh, Cup, or like it was called Tiger Cup before I was part of the group that was uh, where we played in Thailand. Uh -huh. And it was always like, I think then we kind of, yeah, we lost 4 0, 4 0, and then we drew 0 0 and didn't qualify. Um, but this one was like, I feel coming out to this, I was like, we've got a good chance here. Uh, we've got a good squad, and we've had, uh, we've had a good time together before this with all our previous games, really. And like, we had a good long 10 cup, I think. And then we had, yep. uh, we had, we had a good, uh, we had a great time in Manila with the training camps and the training. And like, it's, I think, yeah, this is time. It's time for business now. <laughs> like when we're coming out for this game. Yep. Look at the game faces on everyone. Yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> you were ready for those guys, huh? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to show another picture over here. This yeah, okay. Can you see it, James? Yeah, I can see it. What's it like uh, playing with yeah. these guys? Talk about each and every one of these guys. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work my way from left to right. Uh, yeah. Now, Neil, uh, like Neil is just, uh, it's always great to, like, I, me and my brother, actually, we've known Neil for a long time because uh, he was at Chelsea, he was in the younger age groups when we were training at Chelsea with the academy. And I always remember Neil one time, I think he was a little bit late for one training session and he had to run around the field and they were like, and then it was like, he has to come play with our age group as an outfield player. Um, and then he went back to the other age group. But um, no, nah, it's, and we've, we've all, yeah, and it, when you're in the, in the UK and you know who, who's Filipino or not, it's such a, the community. And yeah, we knew, we heard Neil was Filipino and I always remember, and then Neil transferred to Fulham and it was like, we are like, we always say we know someone who's Philip Neal, like he, he can play with us in the Philippines and we were thinking it would be such a great asset to have the likes of Neil with us. And when it was when he finally when I finally played with Neil in two thousand eight, you could see how uh, how big he was and like how a commanding president he was and with his background and how influential and uh, how uh, valuable he was. So it's always it's always great having Neil around and his personality overall. Uh, Jason as well, like I actually saw Jason today, had a good catch up with him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, yeah, Jason's one as well, like very technically great as well. And mm -hmm. I think uh, like he was, uh, uh, he was a great physical presence uh, during, this, uh, during this campaign, like uh, very uh, physical and winning the ball and very technical, good at maintaining it and, and distributing it. Like, so it was great having Jason as well around and, Obviously, my brother. I've said too much about him, so I won't go into him. Um, and then, and then you have obviously Rob Gear, like uh, a real leader. Like, like if you, I heard this when I was younger with certain players, but yeah, if I had to go to war, uh, Rob would be on my fir first on my list uh, who I'd have in my in my team. So right. just that at that proper leader, uh, like yeah, well, he'll jump, he'll jump, he'll jump on a grenade for everyone. So. Uh, yeah, he'll put his body on the line for everyone. So, and his personality off the field, one of the nicest, like probably the nicest guy. Like, like uh, girls will say, uh, perfect. Like in terms of his the personality he is, but um, as well, like on the field, he's he'll he'll, he'll die for, he'll die for players. So it's a, a great mixture of characters. You know, I remember against Vietnam. Um, no, sorry, Singapore. They were looking for an extra goal, a second goal. Uh, yeah. This was right before uh, Chris scored, and um, I remember his clearance wasn't too good, and the ball went to Kairul Amri, uh, one of their yeah. and he 
smash that ball home, except that Rob got a block on it. And then mm-hmm. the ball went to Alexander Juric, who booted yeah. it in, but uh, went right into Neil. So, wow, yeah. that was something right there. And uh, you're right yeah, about exactly, yeah. you're right about Rob throwing himself over a grenade because essentially that's what he did. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what was it like playing in front of forty thousand people? Was that the biggest for you at that at that particular time? Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was actually. I think yeah, in terms of a full stadium. Yeah. It was, and so that's why you can see if you watch over the highlights again when we're walking out, you can see some smiles from some players. Mm-hmm. How exciting it was, and and again, it's, it's it's true when you're younger, when you're growing up, that's the dream to to be a footballer and play in front of that that many spectators, and and it's, it makes it even like it's, it's like a different experience as well when those supporters are rooting for the other team. So it's like you're up against a whole army as well, and. It was, uh, it was, it's like gives you goosebumps when you walk it, walk out in front of the, those many people. Okay, against Singapore and Vietnam, we only had the Philippine ambassador and some of his staff cheering for us. Obviously, aside yeah. from the Vietnamese who cheered for us against Singapore. Um, mm-hmm. Come Myanmar, when we were in Nam Din, 12 Englishmen f- drove all over the way from Hanoi, some even yeah. flew in from Surrey, England, to watch the game. Yeah, twelve Englishmen wearing Ascal's jerseys and cheering their hearts off. What? It, there you go. I'm sure you remember that because they were in the hotel with us. Yeah, well, yeah, that I do actually. And then when we got to Manila, the team makes an appearance at the PBA, if you recall that. Yes, I do. Yeah. And then at the UMAC, the final practice, UMAC was filled with people. What? What? That was the start of Ascal's mania. So I know you yeah. and Phil were always popular, but. At that point, something had changed. What were you thinking then? No, it's like uh, I was like that whole that whole time. Actually, it was um, it was a bit of a rush, really, and it, it was exciting because we were literally ju- jumping on planes, staying at airports, carrying uh, our equipment, and it was just like yeah. As soon as we got, you could you could see on Twitter, on social media. Uh-huh. The excitement and the news, and we're we're trending uh, majority of the time, and and when you get to Manila, like the new, the, all the news, uh, the the news networks are at the at the airport waiting for you, and it was like this is, and it felt good because you felt like this is what we were working towards. I said I said this earlier to uh, to Jason and his, and his partner, like we. Uh, me and my brother, we originally came here with a 50-year plan to grow the sport. And actually, thanks to that tournament, that it, it put us ahead of schedule, really. And mm-hmm. I think, like, with when you see the, the media waiting outside the airport, it just it really makes you feel good. And it's like, yeah, it's uh, really exciting. And when you go to the – we went to the training and you had uh, thousands of spectators and supporters and uh, sponsors. It was just – it was like uh, it's true, and it is. It's like it was like Beatles mania at the time, right? And then during that first training session in Indonesia for the semifinals, remember around the pitch it was packed yeah. with Indonesian fans, and um, so it just was the Filipino fan. We had the, the team got fans everywhere. So did that weird you out? Because yeah. we had police escort just going back to the hotel. We're yeah, the well, yeah. The thing is, it's all the players and staff we all know from. The, we all know from the experience that the hotel wasn't that far away from the stadium. Yeah, like, but the hard thing was getting from getting there with the bus and, like, and the Indonesian fans. They're amazing. They 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 make it like they they make the they make the whole experience valuable with how they react and like, it's like a pantomime with the villains and everything. I think we had, I don't know if we had a brick thrown at the, at the bus at one point, we had something thrown. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like normally people would be scared, but we were, we were excited for it. We are like, we're not used to this. And, <laughs> and it's like, we, we, we were, I think we were craving more of it. It's like, and it was like, uh, the words, I'm sure, yeah, Chris, Phil and all the boys will remember this. The words of Chris Greatwich were always stick in our minds and it was, the, he was quoting Home Alone when he said, "This is it now. Don't get scared." <laughs> like that was his quote, and we'll never forget that. We were all just cracking up in the bus, and it was yeah, just those moments are really special. 
speaking of special moments, there was this moment in Namdin. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to find me. That, that was the morning. Our first Is it our limba, our um, limba session. Yeah, it was cold, right? It was cold. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we're not used to that. Right? Yeah, so, uh -huh. yeah, there about that front. Do you remember during the limber up when the team was jogging, about a dozen guys in motorcycles and bicycles were following us and they were challenging yeah. the team to a fight like, fight us, fight us, look at us, yeah. fight. <laughs> and then Simon yeah, goes, no one say a word. Just look forward, <laughs> don't even look them in the eye. Yeah, exactly. Like, that no, is, it's good. It was good. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I haven't seen this picture before. I see him with my basketball shoes on. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of these pictures. Awesome. I can share, I can put them on a Google Drive and give you everything because, you know, this is something that uh, I've put together for that first dance thing, you know. And, um, <laughs> Nice. Was it weird playing in a, we went from 40,000 people to like what less than 50 people in the stadium in, in Nam Din? Did that weird you out? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it didn't wear me out. It's, I think what was on our minds was the possibility still to uh, qualify. And uh -huh. we had to get the, it. And I remember it, you're right, it's, it was much colder then. It was yep. like a complete change of temperature. and I remember we were wearing hat. I think we wore Christmas hats at the time uh, yep. for the training session. Yeah. And it was like we wore tights. And I think I remember because it was such a drastic, the thing that I remember the drastic change was the hotel accommodation was we've gone from this nice, uh, I think, five-star hotel with nice TVs, uh -huh. nice food to this other hotel where the accommodation was like for, for a meal was, um, yeah, for a meal was like, uh, jam and bread and uh, and like apple juice and uh, it, the beds were like, a bit colder and everything. I think that was what we were adjusting to. That, that's that's nice the picture right there. That's the hotel right yeah. there. Yeah, it was like and I think I think they made adjustments, but I think that was it. We we obviously we I think being honest, that was the biggest game because if we if we done the business, we did the business. Yeah. I think that there was so much on that game, but I think the worrying thing for us was our we weren't like the big drastic change compared to compared to what we had in the previous hotel to this one. And right. yeah, but I think, yeah, so it was a mental thing and uh, props to uh, boss Dan and the staff uh, for adjusting things and keeping the players mentally ready for the game. I'm glad that James mentioned that because as he said, when we were staying at the Sheraton Hanoi hotel, it was a five class, a five star hotel. When we got this, this was called the Vuang, Vuang Hotel. Yeah. We had to go out and find food because all yeah, we were exactly. ham and cucumbers. Yeah, exactly. It was, <laughs> such a, it was a big change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Um, we didn't have a home game, James. Did that no. upset you? And what, was the, what were you guys talking about, not having a home game? And we're handing Indonesia massive advantage of two matches at the Bung Karno, where they yeah. could eat up to 80,000 people. Yeah. No, when we heard, like, we as well, like I said, like, when we came back to do the training in UMAC and we arrived at the airport, you see the hype from the media and, like, we're the big, I'll be honest, we were the big talk of the, uh, the big talk of the country. Yeah. And obviously, how, how special it would have been to host the game. Uh, being honest, maybe, yeah, we weren't prepared at the time because I think it's, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's maybe the expectations weren't really there at the start for us. And, uh, but, yeah, it was disappointing. Um, but, yeah, I, I'll, I'll share this with you. Um, when we did that, I remember us doing that. We had that break in Manila before the Indonesia, before we were traveling to Indonesia. And I think I was so tired from all the the running in the game and the uh, like the traveling and now, when I went home with, and my mum was there, my brother, we were in the condominium in, near Alabang. And I remember going in the shower and I bent down to get the shampoo and my back went out. Oh. Yeah, I was stuck in the shower by my back and I couldn't move. I couldn't stand straight. I couldn't go down any lower. My back had given way. And I mean, yeah, I was just tired from all the, like, because, yeah, it was a lot of work. But uh, I was thankful for the experience. But I'm like, I'm a young boy and my back's gone out. and 
they, my mom, I called my mom and she arranged for a masseuse to come round and lucky they, they <laughs> I think they, they helped me out of the shower, my back bent over and they put, they, they laid me down on my side, but my back was still like stuck. And then um, the masseuse came around and they slowly massaged and eventually it, it loosened up a bit. But I was like a young, yeah, how old, I think I was yeah, 20, uh, early 20 year old boy whose back's gone out in the shower. Um, so <laughs> that's what I remember from that experience. And cause yeah, it was, it was just all, it was a great experience it was just all happening so fast and all at once and uh, yeah that's a perfect uh exa- you know when when you say say that i'm going to segue into something that rob gear told me because mm. heading into indonesia there was so much happening not just on yeah. the pitch but off the pitch when we yeah. returned to manila you guys are making guest appearance after guest appearance yeah so much going on you know um yeah and even in indonesia i don't think you guys got any rest because there were all these requests for interviews and at yeah. that point at that point it as much as it was cool what were you guys thinking because i know you needed your rest back then and i could just i couldn't oh, well everywhere. yeah yeah oh where were we staying in manila or in indonesia no, in an indonesia if you recall that you were uh, just, no, I'll tell you was fun. Uh, yeah yeah, I think he's going to kill me for telling this story, <laughs> but it was a long time ago. Uh, no, I think what was great is uh, when we were in Indonesia in the hotel, we found ways to keep ourselves occupied and just have a bit of banter. And we, we got a little running gag going on that. Um, we uh, decided to play a prank on uh, Neil Etheridge, where we, like, uh, we, would, um, we wrote a letter <laughs> pretended it was from a fan in Indonesia, like an attractive female fan who, I, I remember, remember we were limbering, we, were, we saw this nice uh, pre-Indonesian lady and she was, uh, she was she had a nice body and so we, we played a prank on Neil where let's write a letter saying it's from her and we'd send it to Neil and he'd go and tell him to go wait in the lobby <laughs> to meet up. I remember and, um, that. <laughs> yeah, and... And I remember us all coming up, like me, Ray, Rob, I think Chris was there, uh, and my brother were in the in the bedroom, like, and we're like, "What? Let's write the letter to meet up." And the tricky part was, what name do we come up with? And I, I, I was the one who threw out there, Let, whatever name comes out on the TV in Indo- an Indonesian ta- channel, that's the name we write. So we flipped through the channels. I found an Indonesia channel. This name came up on some telenoveda, and so Ray wrote down that name and. And I, we gave it in. I can't remember, I can't remember who we talked. I think it might have been one of the staff we gave to. I don't know if it was Wally or Ace. Or, we told them to give it to Neil and say it was. Oh, no, it was Joseph. We told Joseph to give it to Neil and say it's from. A, uh, he got it from the lobby. And they gave it to Neil. And Neil went down to me. Went and, down, yeah. And we, and we were all in the bedroom just cracking up laughing. When he came back up, he's like, she didn't come. But like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so we're so cruel, but oh bless Neil, he's gonna kill me for telling that story. But it was great well, times. Well, we knew about it. In fact, um what Dan did was he made me stay downstairs and said, make sure none of the boys go out. So yeah. I saw Neil come down and he said he's waiting for someone, and then <laughs> <laughs> he's standing there looking around and say, Maybe that's her. So he went up to this lady and no, it's not her. <laughs> that was insane. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know. I don't think after the 2010 Suzuki Cup, I don't think we were blown out anymore because Indonesia no, no, no. won by one nil. Yeah, and, um, mm. I know that. I know that we tried, but mm. I wonder sometimes if you ran out of gas against Indonesia because there's, as Rob said, there's just so much going on. And um, yeah, you know, do you, how do you feel about those matches against Indonesia? Um. No, it's, I think the thing that blew us away was just uh, like Ray Johnson said the other day, like most of us claim that the, the, the miracle in Hanoi was our favourite moment. Or Ray says his favourite moment was the Indonesia, just the, the electricity of the crowd, the experience of paying in front of 80,000 people. Yeah. Like from, you're standing next to each other, you can't hear each other, you're literally standing next to each other and that's like something you never experienced in your life. And um, yeah, when I think I don't know, I 
maybe if one of our games was in Manila, maybe we things may be indifferent. Maybe the scoreline would have been different. Yeah. Uh, and but yeah, of course, it's like the chance to play twice in front of eighty thousand people. I'm sure like some players like will take that as well. Um, but no, it's as well. They uh, just like they and they had eighty thousand. They were host. They're hosts in the group stages as well, Indonesia. So they had a good run of. Uh, 80,000 people consistently at their games to build up to that. So the Indonesian players are probably used to that compared to us. For us, it was, I mean, you could say that. And as well, like, um, I think, yeah, we weren't quite like, uh, like we're just getting used to it. And I think, yeah, as you said, I, since then we weren't the blowout boys. And I mean, it's, it's true with experience. Uh, that's how you grow. And I mean, yeah, as time's gone on, well, we've gotten used to those kind of pressures. Even if we lost, we came away with the respect of everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'll be honest. Lives were changed after that. I, I know yeah. some players got offers as well. So exactly. Yeah, because yeah. every game after that, everyone prepared for the team, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'll be honest. So mine and my brother's original plan was like uh, when Dan asked, uh, Dan met with us and told us his plan, and we wanted to be back involved. Yeah. Our original plan was for me and Phil to. Um, to uh, go back, go really into full-time coaching football in the Philippines and grow grassroots football, uh, get into grassroots football in the Philippines with our academy. And so, yeah, it's, and then obviously things went different, a different route after that. Okay, before we go through that different route, there's this iconic photo <laughs> that I snapped. Yeah. How, this came out in a print ad for Gatorade and yeah. When you see this picture, what is this picture has been used so many times. What do you think when you see this picture, what what comes to your mind, James? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Um this is before Singapore, yeah. Yes, it is. Before Singapore. Yeah, so this is this is like uh I think what comes to my mind is like a group of uh I think a group of player a group of men and play uh, boys who are who have no idea what's about to happen and we're going in it with like the attitude of nothing to lose really. So that's what comes into my mind. It's fantastic. Now I'm going to show you another picture that's somewhat related from the Ascals <laughs> to the Sparks. To Malca. Yeah. <laughs> um, this was good. What, what, you know, aside from the UFL, there were those uh, campaigns in the Singapore Cup. Yeah. What do you take away from the Singapore Cup? That ex oh, uh, Singapore that was a fantastic great. experience too, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, it's uh, like I said, like, I was captain of that team and worked closely with the management. And I think what, what was being built was amazing and fantastic. And it was great, like, on the rise of the growth of Philippine football, the interest and popularity. And... It was great to go there as well in Singapore because we had the support of the, the Philippine embassy and the Philippine community there as well. And so we'd have good turnouts of our games there. And it was good. It felt like real uh, like international football as well, another form of international football as well. If you're not with the ASCAL, this is another form of it where it's like a road trip with, uh, with your work colleagues. We spent like two weeks there in Singapore for the next couple of years. That was 2012 and 13. What yeah. was and fourteen, of course. Uh, was this exactly how you envisioned club football? You know, yeah, traveling yeah. and stuff yeah. teams. No, definitely, and I, I still hope that in the future for Philippine football in, in next year, like there can be more of these where more teams from the local football can have these experiences and travel, because it's a complete different test. Really, it's you're going up against opponents you're not used to, and it's. It's a, it is, it's representing uh, your country in another form as well. And uh, now it's good. It was good to have like and to see like uh, and you knew that like you had the league game. It was a, it was good to keep it fresh, really. Like in terms of you had one league game in the UFL, and then you had a, a Singapore Cup game, and then you had a cup game. And it's good. It just keeps it fresh and uh, keeps you motivated as a player. How different was this team? Because obviously it had a Korean flavor to it. There was Master Kim, and then we had like three or four yeah. Koreans on that team. Yeah. Uh, we also had some Africans. What was it like for you 
to play with the sparks because you guys were oh, like rock stars yeah it was that was really, it was really good i find again with this i would say the good teams are like you have like a, a balance of good characters and uh and as well here there's a good balance of different characters and different uh good balance of different types of players uh, i think here the good thing is you said you've got those the more the foreign players in terms of the korean players uh, and it's good to like one of the nicest guys I've, we've ever met and you've got some local players as well like ref charisma uh roxy uh Anto, alex and then you have another foreign player so davide who comes in and brings yeah. his own take so, so and then you have me and my brother and like some mark where we played in a certain level in the uk and we've worked, so it's a good combination it's like it again it sounds cheesy but it's true you have a like a good collage of good mixture of different uh, uh like you could say some form of art where it all comes together and you create that art on the football field but it's true really and i think that's what was really good and exciting about the whole thing and speaking of that international flavor, I have one more photo to show you here. Ah, uh, yes. The that was the first match. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah the first uh, clear tree match, I remember, yeah. You know, we had some, I think you know, we had Cannavaro the next year. Yeah, this one, yeah, this one was more of a celebrities oh. from, Philippine, yeah. from the Philippines. So, That's right. Yeah, this was an interesting one, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? We packed you, Mac. You might was oh, oh, it was amazing. No, I'm very, very thankful for to clear for this, and it was great for the sport. And I hope in the future we can get to this again. Right. Uh, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you though. Know, like when we came into this one, I obviously I'd watched the All Star games of the NBA, mm-hmm. and then I'd watched like charity games of the like football around the world. So being honest, I took this one a bit lightly, and I just wanted this one to be really fun. The problem was my brother, he was so competitive and he went all out to win. So yes. that's why it ended up, the first one ended the way it did. I'm not making excuses, it's just the truth. Uh, but yeah, and that's why I had to sort of change the game plan in number two and three. <laughs> Actually, I'm wearing the jersey right now. <laughs> I know, see, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're about to wrap up our webcast. Okay, um, do people still stop you? Like, talking to Simon, people still refer to him, even whether he's in Indonesia or Vietnam, as, oh, he's the Philippines coach. <laughs> How often do people ask you about 2010? If um, they do at all. So, no, it's, some do. Some do still. And, but yeah, we're, we're still known as uh, the Asgals. <laughs> like, uh, when you walk around, uh, Asgal, <laughs> Asgal. No, it's great. We're very proud of that. And of course, I think when you think of ASCAL, you think of 2010, because uh, that's when it all started. And that's when ASCALs became the household name. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, no, I'm very proud of that. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll hold on to that forever. Before you came over to the Philippines, did, did you ever think in your wildest dreams that some of the, these things would happen to you? And, and... Um. I didn't think it would go, I didn't dream it would or think it would go exactly the way it did. Although I had, um, I say I had visions, I had, um, yeah. I had uh, goals I set up when I was originally in the UK and we got our taste of, um, of representing the Philippines. And the more we'd come here, we'd, we'd learn how things were like structured of the, how, uh, with how the school systems and everything is. And yeah. we just like, we feel like, there's room for that we want to help out and want the sport to grow here. So I'd have what certain ways are uh, like um, set dreams that we would want for it to be achieved. Um, anyway, yeah, I remember, yeah, what, like one time play, I remember UFL first started and there was a, we were discussing of like, we first moved to the Philippines. We just want to play football and have fun. And there was a the talk of us playing for a certain team and it was just, yeah, it's, we weren't ready at the time, but it was, but we didn't imagine it would turn out the way it did, really. And that's why it's still now it's uh, things have changed a bit compared to before. But I still think it's possible to get those things going and using what what uh, we learned before, what work and what doesn't work to help us in the future. Right. Just a few more questions here. Um, yep. What's next for you, man? I mean, um, <laughs> I know that you've done some coaching as well, yeah. but... 
when you when your football career winds down, what do you plan to do? And uh, take off after Phil. Do you plan to get hitched anytime soon? <laughs> Sorry to pop that question, my friend. Ah, it's okay. It's, um, I would say it is. Uh, obviously, my plan was originally. Like, I think uh, from like before when you're in your mid twenty, uh, when you're in your twenties, and then after you hit, after you turn thirty, then it's you start realizing, oh, not long left. And it sounds like a long time a year, but actually in football terms, time flies by. Yeah. Uh, but obviously with this pandemic now, my plan was just to play out for the year and and then reassess in at the end of the year. But uh, I had a great time with Sarah's last year when we won the double. And I, to us, I wasn't 100% sure what my plan was for this year, but after winning a double and like, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it so much at Sarah's and working with everyone and training and working with the club, that I decided to stay on for one more year. And now obviously this pandemic has hit. So things uh, like, obviously we have to adjust and look at certain things. But for me, it's just uh, like, obviously it's getting everything back to normal and, like when football's allowed to be played, we'll see what happens. Um, right. But um, now, me, it's just I obviously now I'm in my yeah I'm turning 34 in a few couple of months, and uh, that's sort of near the towards the end of the playing careers. And my my goal is to like still remain in football, and yeah, whether it's as a coach or another form. But yeah, coaching something I, it's another pleasure I get um, uh, with uh, something I've looked into. And of course, there's other things I'd like to get into, as especially during this pandemic, you realize uh, life is too short, so you want to do as much as you can with this gift uh -huh. we've been given. You mentioned painting. Is there anything within reach that you can show us on your screen? Uh, no, actually, no, I haven't got it at the moment, Rick. Uh, it'll be, it's my social media software. I, I painted a lovely zebra the other uh, before, and I was quite, it was quite good. And yeah, I've gone back into doodling and drawing. And yeah, that's something I, everyone always asks me, what would I have done if I didn't get into football? I said graphic design and in school, I really enjoyed art, uh, being creative really. So uh, maybe that's something I'll get into in the future. Right. As I understand, you're also a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Definitely, definitely. Really. <laughs> and um, how does it Unfortunately, it was delayed. Like Black yeah. Widow delayed. Well, but yeah, I'm into my movies and... Marvel, yeah, actually during my time off last year, I was quite lucky enough with Disney Philippines to sort me out to go and attend the Captain Marvel uh, event in Singapore. So, and that was oh, really cool. It, it was amazing. It was one of the best experiences. And I think I learned a lot from that in terms of fan engagement and what makes people so connected with it. And it's, they really value their fans in terms of the experience. And yeah, get, I was, I've, Thankful that uh, Gemma Chan gave me a nice selfie. <laughs> and it was funny. I'm holding the phone that she actually, I'm not sure she's used to these type of phones, but she had to like, I had to show her how to work the phone. And uh, yeah, I was, and again, to see Samuel Jackson walk past us. So I was with my friend Graham Cagle. It was a really awesome experience. But my one thing I wanted was a picture of Brie Larson. But we are so disappointed, so angry that she missed our section. And we blame her publicist for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last question, my friend. Yep. Is it in the cards for you or Phil to coach the Asgals down the road? Um, uh, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. It's, uh, I'll be honest, like, um, I think these things, it comes to just, it's all about, like, just the way things work out and timing and how much someone wants it. Like, of course, like, I'll be honest, like, every player, like, I'll speak, I can speak on every player, like, there's, loads of us who uh, many players who want to who want to uh, help help coach the Philippine Azcars because it'd be such an honor and great uh, uh, great experience and uh, but as I said earlier there's players with the personalities they have who, who I'm sure could have likes of I'll be honest likes of Rob Gear and um, uh, Chris Greatwich I think like just their personalities are suited towards those roles in in the future really and uh, yeah, we'll say Neil, you can be goalkeeper coach. <laughs> like, I'm teasing Neil. Um, now me, I, me and Phil, like we would love that first role. And if it's if at the time we've we've got the experience and we feel the timing's right with our what we've done, I, I think we be nice. We've I feel just finished it. Well, finished his playing career last year. Me maybe soon. And like we get into coaching, we need to get our experience there. But there's right. players already ahead of us and. 
but yeah, who knows it? Who knows how these things work out? And yeah, yeah maybe hopefully, maybe in the future we can all get a, uh, get a run in, or how all every single one of us be uh, on the staff or the Aztecals, and that, I mean, that would be, be the that would be awesome. I'll tell you, it'd be a great party at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing is this your fifteenth year celebrating football in the Philippines? I'm fifteen. Yeah, 2005 was my first time with oh, the C-Games in Bacolod. There you go, 15. Happy 15th 15. anniversary, James. Thanks, thanks, Rick. Cheers, I keep man. track of these things. <laughs> yeah, you're very good, you're very good, though. very good, very good. <laughs> well, any last words? Oh, I, I, need, I need you to know this. We have some, we have a dedicated base of frontliners, those in the health oh, okay. industry watching. Apparently, they're football fans, and some of them are watching awesome. from... From some some of the uh, hospitals, do you have any oh, message okay. for them? Do you have any message? Yeah, for them? yeah. Just like say uh, to the front to those frontliners, uh, uh, thank you guys so much for your your hard work and dedication. It's uh, it, it's true that you guys are like super brave and uh, the real heroes. Uh, always, not just now, but always, if what you uh, what you dedicate your lives to. And no, it's great. And I think when it comes to us. Uh, playing football like like it's uh, we really do play these games for the likes of you guys who who sacrifice so much and uh, yeah I hope in the future we can get back to playing and and uh, show you how much uh, you guys mean to us so Marami Salamat for your work and and hope to meet you all in the future and please stay safe as uh, as much as you can your last word on the 2010 Suzuki Cup your last word my last word, all oh, that pressure. That's a very serious pressure. All pressure. Um, no, it's, um, I will say, is it one now? I'll say a sentence. Um, Go ahead. Uh, it's that I, I hold that, I hold that whole experience that was, I, I can say, and I don't think in terms of football experience, nothing can ever top that. Uh, I think that whole experience was, uh, was an amazing, the, the most amazing and uh, things all footballers, I hope all footballers can experience in their careers and uh, just the personalities, everyone involved from all the players on the field, all the, on the bench, on the staff, yeah, like everyone involved, even the preparation, the camps, the, the Val camp, uh, even, along, even the Thailand one, I remember that, like that whole ex journey and experience was something that I hope we can share it in a documentary or as you said, the first dance or the or the or a movie someday because it is a great story, one of the best stories ever, being honest. It is a great story. And with that, before we bid everyone good night, we want to say hi and thank you to some of the football folks watching. Um, we've got Rapi Lorente, former UFL player. Um, hi. <laughs> Ruel Hener, of course, uh, Coach Ronnie yeah. Patulin, uh, Anto Gonzalez, of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> and the ever loyal Angel Girado, who's watching. And, Angel, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> I some hope to see Angel soon. <laughs> some of your former Askels teammates, Yanti Barsales, uh, Yanti. <laughs> Global Bermejo, they're watching too. Ian Araneta, awesome. Chief Ikalignong. Uh, <laughs> You know, Rally San Agustin, this Coach Maor, and Coach Juan Cutillas, all the way from Spain. Ah, Coach Cutillas, how are you? I hope you're safe. Like, I all hope right. you're safe, Coach. <laughs> so we want to thank everyone for watching Usapang Football with um, my good friend here. <laughs> number seven, associate <laughs> number seven with James Young Husband. James, Thanks, Rick. <laughs> pleasure as always. It's always good to thank see you. Thank you so much, Rick. And you keep up that fire and passion, man. Don't lose it. Will Don't do. I will. I, I, well, I won't lose it. But, um, but <laughs> I know. Thank you. So, thank you so much, Rick. It's. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, uh, putting this all together and Frank, for calling me and bringing me on. It's. No, it's really great. Um, especially during these times, it's great to to talk about uh, positive things in life. I'll be sending you stuff on a Google Drive so you can download ah. everything. Thanks so much, Rick. Great right. to see you, buddy. <laughs> sure. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Yeah, sure. Good night. Good bye night, bye. Rick. Bye-bye. Good night, guys. Bye. Regards to Kerry. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye.